Generation 1 Pokemon Games A Necessity for Gracious Living While over 1,000 of these bizarre critters are wandering around on our screens as of the recently released Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games, the 151 original Pocket Monsters continue to steal the limelight. These now iconic characters are household names, with probably even your grandmother being able to identify what a Pikachu is. But what may come as a surprise to you today is how much time Japan had access to Pokemon games before those of us living in the West. The legendary turn-based RPGs Pokemon Red and Blue versions would be released in North America in September of 1998. Europeans had to wait 13 months longer to receive the game in October 1999, an entire decade after the original Game Boy launched. In Japan, on the other hand, they had been playing this version of the game since October 1996, meaning they had access to the title an entire three years before Europeans, which is actually insane. To make this story even crazier, neither those who grew up in Europe nor North America were allowed to play the original version of Pokemon, which came out as early as February of 1996, three and a half years before Europe got Pokemon at all. So in today's video to celebrate the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, let's head over 26 years back into the franchise's past to look at the Pokemon game we never got. I am Lady Decade and this is the story of Pokemon Green Version, the Pokemon game which was kept from us. While many games automatically assume that Pokemon Red and Green released in Japan are just the Pokemon Red and Blue we would later get in the West, the truth is very different. In fact, our Red and Blue would be localised variants of Japan's Pokemon Blue version, an updated reiteration of the first Pokemon games, making it the Pokemon equivalent to Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Basically, several substantial updates were made, resulting in a different experience. Which raises the question of how did the earliest versions of Pokemon come to be? Well, the story of this game starts with a gentleman known as Satoshi Tajiri, a massive fan of arcade games who ran his own gaming fanzine known as Game Freak. Before even this unfolding, growing up, Tajiri was an enormous fan of bug collecting, an experience he would reflect on many years later after transitioning from running a fanzine into running a development company using the same name, Game Freak. Tajiri would pitch his bug-catching inspired game to Nintendo as early as 1990, but would be met with scepticism. Nintendo believed that his pocket monster idea was not only too ambitious, but it would not be easy to find an audience it appealed to. It is reported that Super Mario Bros, Zelda and Donkey Kong creator Shigeru Miyamoto thought otherwise, saw potential in the grand plan and convinced the company to go ahead with the project anyway. Obviously, 1990 lines up with just after the release of the Game Boy, a system that Chijiri felt would be perfect for his game, with the link cable serving as an ideal tool for players to swap their collectible beasts. Seeing yen symbols with the collectability factor involved, Shigeru Miyamoto suggested creating multiple cartridges housing different Pokemon in each, noting it would assist with the trading aspect. Gameplay-wise, Tajiri was inspired by the handheld RPG, The Final Fantasy Legend, realising there was more to what the Game Boy could do beyond puzzle and action-oriented titles. A longtime friend of Tajiri, Ken Sugimori, would begin working on the game and would be in charge of getting many weird and wonderful designs for the wide cast of Pokemon produced. Reportedly, a team of 10 people would conceive the designs, eventually narrowing it down to 151. Initially titled Capsule Monsters in its early development, Pocket Monsters would eventually be settled on. After a long development process, the rest is history, but the game's original version only lasted on the market for eight months before Blue version was created. But why? To understand the difference between the green version and the original red, we must first look at the updated Pokemon Blue. Blue version was first announced on the 15th of October 1996 in an issue of the Koro Koro comic. Initially only available via mail order, but later made available to the broader market, the special edition of the game was touted to be released to celebrate over 1 million sales of the previous versions. 
Many speculated that the main reason for this new version of the game was to produce a more refined version that was more in line with the Pokemon anime that would begin airing on TV Tokyo in April 1997. Comparatively, most of the designs in the green version look incredibly ugly compared to those in later versions of the game. Every design had been redrawn for blue version to make the game more appealing to children and bring the game franchise closer to the TV show. But as also stated in this video, blue version was like Champion Edition, so let's discuss what other elements were changed between the versions. Throughout most Pokemon games, aside from the six Pokemon that you carry on you at all times, the rest of your collectible critters are stored within the game's PC boxes. In the earlier version of the game, the PC storage in green would differ from that of blue. In blue, you would have 12 boxes, whereby you could store 20 Pokemon each, whereas in green, you only had 8 boxes, but could store 30 Mons in each. Either way, this translates to gamers being able to hold 240 Pokemon in the PC. In my opinion, it was not necessarily a good change, as the update meant players had to manually change the PC box they were transferring their newly caught Pokemon more frequently. So, odd tinkering here. Like the Pokemon designs, some of the animations for moves included in green version would be changed with the update. Specific attacks appeared a bit jarring, with electrical based attacks appearing particularly irritating aesthetically. There are also dialogue changes present within the game. For example, in green version, one of the corrupt scientists for Silphco mentions that he works with a company branch in Russia. This reference would be removed in the updated iteration. Those who beat the Elite Four in the West became champions and headed to Unknown Dungeon to capture Mewtwo. The final area to explore has an entirely different layout from the one that appeared in the original green version. In a more hilarious change, those who have played Red and Blue in North America and Europe may recall being blocked by an NPC in Viridian City, blocking a path. In the game, the NPC tells you he cannot move because he hasn't had his coffee yet. However, in the original green version, it's because he's drunk. Amazing. Aside from the differing Pokemon designs, the most famous difference with green version is the music being slightly different when visiting Lavender Town. Many gamers were familiar with this change, but so few had access to green version back in the day that this led to many internet rumours surrounding this difference. A creepypasta would be built around the game's original music, causing players to get so depressed that they would commit self-deletion. In reality though, it was changed as it sounded jarring due to its high-pitched frequency and harsh tone, reportedly even giving some people minor headaches. Still, a headache is better than death. So let's listen to the differences. One of the game's changes would result in a famous dialogue error in Blue version. Long term Pokemon fans may recall playing the classic game and trading a Raichu for an Electrode. When you send the Raichu over to the NPC, Raichu's proud new owner tells the player, the Raichu you traded to me went and evolved. As you likely know, Raichu is a final form with no evolution. The error is there as in green version you trade the NPC a Kadabra, which subsequently evolves into an Alakazam during the trade. But those silly sausages at Game Freak forgot to update the text to make sense in the newer edition of the game. Furthermore, the Western Pokemon Red and Blue versions are infamous for the number of glitches that can be exploited. I am looking at you, missing no. Insanely, Pokemon Green version is even glitchier, with more exploits being available than even the Pokemon game we grew up with. Game Freak successfully removed many of these glitches with the updated version of the game, but as you know, a number of them still remained. If you would like a video exploring some of these glitches down the line, then let me know in the comment section, as tons of these have been discovered over the years. 
As much as we laugh at the bugs in the early Pokemon games, in a 90s world where internet use was limited, these technical issues amusingly, in many ways, positively added to the gameplay experience. They often made the world of Pokemon feel even more mysterious, with these simple landscapes often feeling like they were full of endless possibilities. Green Version was a game many Western kids had heard about on the grapevine before the millennium, with countless playground myths existing around this early Japanese exclusive. We now know that most of these myths are untrue, but this doesn't mean that Green Version isn't an exciting buggy game with considerable differences from what Gen 1ers grew up with over here. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I bet you'd like to know what this slot was for at the bottom of the NES. See you soon.